Welcome everyone. Today I wanted to share some follow-up thoughts from the Cardano Effect episode with Rod Alexander regarding the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I had an idea. I've been thinking about it for a few weeks now. And it's to address this whole idea of decentralized finance and allowing the unbanked to finally be banked or finally participate within this ecosystem. So having access to loans and whatnot. But this implies that we're going to follow the traditional microfinance model, which has been proven to be a very predatory, especially for the poorest of the poor, while you are accessing or you are giving them the access to loans. These often are met with high interest rates and uh, the poorest of the poor are forced to take loans to pay off other loans. And unfortunately, these people do not even have a voice. So these stories are largely underreported, but it is very predatory and it needs to change in order for us to bring these people within this in ecosystem, within the new decentralized ecosystem meaning that interest rates will have to decrease to a feasible amount. I mean, right now there are various different solutions in third world countries that offer these micro loans. You can get a hundred US dollars to help fund your business, but the APR, the interest per year is 20, 25, 30% sometimes. And it differs, it doesn't greatly differ from the traditional model of these payday loans or these things that are looked at as predatory, but they tie the name microfinance to it. And all of a sudden you think that it's more revolutionary than it actually is. But 20, 25, 30% for people that are in impoverished areas is asinine. I mean, if you look at Western countries, a lot of people could not make those payments on a 20, 25, 30%. A lot of small businesses, medium enterprises could not take that loan risk with the given profit model for a lot of different industries. So if I went to a Western country, if I went to the United States, if I went to a small business in, in, in Europe, and uh, you offer them these loans and then you attach 20, 25, 30%, a lot of the times they can't match that. So how do you expect people that are in more impoverished areas with access to less resources to pay back that loan? But at the same time, you are loaning people money that you don't know. And there's this whole idea of identity, creating some sort of rating system. So how do we bring these people in, offer loans, but also offer returns to the investors who are providing the loans? And one of the models that I think that could work is a little bit different from the traditional model. It's this idea of fast or quick loans, but they're even more micro, they're even more condensed. Taking it on a day by day basis and offering returns based on day output or day supply or day sales. And let me explain. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number eight is decent work and economic growth. So I take this example from a third world country that is very close to the United States and I have a lot of ties to, and that is Haiti. Haiti is a very impoverished nation. It's in the Caribbean, just south of Florida. And this is one of the poorest countries in the world. And when you go to Haiti, you see that Businesses run differently there. If you've ever been to Haiti or if you've ever been to the streets in Port-au-Prince, you see that there are a lot of vendors, a lot of sellers that are selling produce, that are selling vegetables, a lot of street vendors. So people are very, they have an entrepreneur mind state, so a lot of people are selling in the streets. But the at the end of the day, I try to figure out where these people are getting the actual supplies and how are they getting the money to fund their inventory? Because these are the poorest of the poor. They're not making a lot of money per day. I mean, the middle class wage, the middle class, so middle class in Haiti earns $5 a day. So these people wouldn't even be considered middle class that are selling vegetables in the street, selling food in the street, selling water. So they're making a lot less. So. How do they get their inventory? Where do they get their inventory? They often go to these depots to pick up their produce or pick up their vegetables and they're taking loans on their inventory and it could be extremely predatory. So they are 
they may only have 10 to 20 or maybe $30 of inventory, USD valuation of food, and they're paying interest on that inventory. So if they don't sell that inventory, then they're just accruing interest and it's harder to re-up on inventory. But instead, a new system could be proposed in which fast and quick loans were provided to these people given that they had a certain track record of sales. So say you partnered up with a local farmer who sells corn, who creates corn or who plants corn and then supplies these vendors. Each vendor may come and re-up for $5 or $10 of corn for that day. And they could provide some sort of projection. Maybe I sell 80% of the corn or I sell this many husks per day. And given that information, it could be entered into a system. And people within the decentralized ecosystem that are providing loans could provide these micro, micro, micro loans. So say you are only giving $5 or $10 to this person for the day. And when they have to come back and report their sales by the end of the day or at the end of the week, then interest could be figured out. So the risk is a lot less. So instead of you feeling like you are loaning out $100 and you need to have $120 by the time you get it back, this is even more micro. So it could be on a day-to-day -day basis. You provide the inventory for someone, $5 day one, they come back, they sold all their inventory, they may, may have made five, $6, $7, and they only pay 1% or 2%, a fraction of a percent. And people would be more willing to loan out money if it was in smaller amounts, and you could take risks. So certain people, certain vendors could build up their rating systems about how many different times they actually went back to the queue and reported their sales, and uh, they could be grouped in. So say this is the five-star seller category, and you could spread out a lot of money over various different loans. So instead, I, I, it's done in the traditional system, but the, the, the risk is a lot higher because the dollar valuation of those loans is a lot higher. So instead of providing these larger sums, maybe $100 per vendor, you provide five, $10 per vendor, and then see the results. I think it would be a much more efficient system and if you compare this with staking, depending on how the loan would be administered, whether it be an ADA or whether it be in a stable coin, you may be getting 1% back for your, for your loan investment in a week, rather than your four to 5% that you expect to receive yearly via staking. So I'm not sure exactly how that would work, but it would have to work in the way that the loan system would have to be adopted by the farmer and the and the people that are actually taking loans out in order to provide their inventory in order to sell on the street would have to have that direct relationship with that farmer. It wouldn't work with the middleman that currently exists because they have a loan based model and they're, they're taking risk and they want to make sure that they keep their, the same business model intact. But all I'm saying is reduce the, reduce the size of the collateral required to give loans increase the frequency of the loans, do it on more of a just-in-time business model, so just-in-time loans for the people that are most impoverished. This way, you are addressing needs that are current to, like, current, I'm talking about weeks to months, or to days, so the needs are met exactly there. Instead of drawing out a business plan that may take a lot longer to build, may take a lot more client, uh, uh, may take a lot more energy in order to start seeing returns. And I think this is where people go awry. People in the United States, people in Western Europe, you always give them this business metric, you know, it starts, it takes like three years in order to start generating a profit for businesses and most businesses fail. So even after that three year period, most of them just go down. So we are requiring, we are right now the current system, you're providing these microfinance loans that are 20, 25, 30% APR and then you're requiring these people who are creating a business and not getting in the same amount of time in order to build their business and uh, They're just accruing debt 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 and they're loaning upon loans loaning upon loans and they have no voice so it it leads to Complete inequities in the system and people get taken advantage of people get taken advantage of at the bottom level 
So instead, providing more loans, instantaneous loans for day-to-day -day expenditures or week-to-week -week expenditures or month-to-month -month expenditures. Things that can be verified that day, that moment. Someone is selling uh, shaved ice in the streets. They know they sell 40% on Monday or they can fill, fill out this, this portion of their cart on Monday. They need a loan for that amount of money. They can say that, oh, I'll, I'll be done with this in a couple of weeks. Submit, the, submit, their, submit their loan request in the app, get instantaneously funded by someone who is looking for that type of loan to, for, to give that type of loan and then move on forward from there. So yes, I think that this is something that could be built. Um, I think that this is something that's a little bit more innovative than the current model of looking at microfinance. It's more just in time. It's more appropriate for certain business needs. We don't wanna, microfinance is a buzzword and it, it, it doesn't work in most situations. So we need to try to figure out ways to revolutionize the system in this decentralized economy. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any ideas, but I thought this would be a good idea moving Cardano forward or moving blockchain forward in that particular direction of offering more instantaneous and differing the business model where you're working directly with the farmer and the seller rather than the middleman who is providing the liquidity for these vendors in the street. Let me know what you think and until the next video, thank you.